Hello. Hello. Yes. So. Okay. So, good evening, everybody. I am releasing the first question, and uh, you can uh, can everybody log in, right? If you are having any issues with login, then let me know. I'm releasing the first question. So refresh your uh, tabs. The you can refresh the page, and you will get the first question. So the first question is, we are given this train routes, routes, okay? So we have all these train routes from different uh, stations. So all the stations are numbered as 0, 1, 2, 3. And from every station, we have the train routes uh, to the, uh, we know the next station. We, we know what are the adjoining stations, okay? So we can represent the connections between these stations as a graph. The question asks, what is the minimum number of hops required or what is the, we have to find a, a route from the starting station to the ending station. Okay, so we have the starting point and the ending point and we want to find the uh, route between these two in the minimum number of uh, hops possible, a minimum number of stops possible, stations possible between them. Okay, so uh, try solving this problem uh, once and once you are done, then we can look into that. We can discuss the solution. If you can click on in the file section in the uh, left, si left side panel, in this panel, in the files part, there is BFS sort shortest path.png. If you can look into that file, that image gives the graphical representation for the example given in the question. In the question, we have this example. Uh, for the input is, uh, the starting point is 8, the ending point is 7, and this is the adjacency list. So in the adjacency, this is the adjacency list is the input. So here from 0, we have an edge to 8. So if you can look into the BFS sortest path.png, you can look into the uh, uh, you can look into the graphical representation of the adjacency list for that particular example. Okay. So uh, try to solve this and we can discuss the solution in about a half an hour or something. Anybody else has any doubts or something, then please let me know. Madam, could you please explain this question again? Oh, your voice is not coming. Hello, can you see my screen? Yes, now. OK, so we are given this starting point. We are given an ending point, And we are given the adjacency list for this graph. OK, and what we want is we want to compute if there is a if there is a path from this starting point, let's say the starting point is 8 and the ending point is 7. We want to find if there is a path from this 8 to 7. 
okay if there is a path from 8 to 7 then what is the minimum uh, way what is the minimum possible way like for example how for example from 8 to 7 we see 8 to 9 9 to 1 1 to 3 and 3 to 7 this is a path so i can go to 7 from 8 via 9 1 3 and 7 right now there can be multiple such ways in a graph so what i want is i want to find the shortest possible way so shortest possible way means the shortest number of the number of points that we have i have to cross to reach 7 from 8 should be minimum okay so okay. Uh, so should we print the number of ages that we have no you don't have to print that i'm coming to that next so what we are given is in the input my input looks something like this so the starting point will be 8 the first value will be 8 the ending point will be 7 and then i will be you will be given the adjacency list of the graph so the adjacency list is represented in this dictionary form where this uh, keys are the node and the uh, values is a list from this node to which other nodes the edges are going like for example from 0 i have an edge to 8 so and 0 the uh, the value for 0 will be a list containing 8 similarly the value for the list contain uh, well, list of edges going from 8 will be 0 and 9 like here we have this from 9 my edges are going towards 1 so sorry this is a bad example so let's go to 3 in 3 my edges are going from 3 to 7 then from 3 to 2 and from 3 to 1 okay so in this list the values for the key 3 my 3 is the key here and the values for the 3 key will be a list con containing 1 2 and 7 okay so this is the adjacency list of the graph so once this is done i want to print the shortest route to the other node to the uh, uh, other node so here i want to go from 8 to 7 so what is the shortest route from 8 to 7 i go from 8 to 9 then from 9 to 1 then i go from 1 to 3 and from 3 to 7 so i will be printing 9 3 9 1 3 in the same order what are the uh, nodes that i have to cross in order to reach 7 in the mi minimum possible uh, po the, what is the minimum possible route i have to cross minimum number of nodes and what are the nodes that i will be crossing okay so here the output will be from 8 to 7 i need to go from 8 to 9 then from 9 i need to go to 1 and from 1 i need to go to 3 and from 3 i need to go to 7 okay, okay. hello okay 9 1 3 7 so sorry these are 1 2 3 4 okay number of ages that we passed to yeah 9 to 7 yes yes also i have to print the number of the output will be the number of uh number of uh, the length of this list like what is the length of this list that also i have to print out so we have to return two two things array and an one minute one minute one minute just give me one minute let me check exactly what we have to print actually you don't have to print anything the code inside will actually handle it so in the code it is given here you have to print uh, the code will print the length of the shortest path but you have to return you have to write the function minimum hops okay and the minimum hops will return the uh, path actually so you have to this is the path 8 to 9 9 to 1 1 to 3 3 to 7 so 8 9 1 3 7 represents the path your function should return this path okay, okay. This path. and the output will be the length of the shortest path 
Oh, no. So this is the suffix okay. code. Okay. Mm -hmm. You have okay. to write the uh, function before this. Okay. Yes, understand. We have to use the bread for search to get this minimum. Power. Sorry, you have to use the BFS and the bread yes. for search. Yes, yes. You have to use BFS to do that. Okay. So, ma'am, why BFS will not work? BFS can work. Why will it not work? But I think DFS is a, is a, is it the DFS is a right cho choice? You can use either. Okay. You have to return me the uh, shortest path length. Okay. And to compute the shortest path, you need to know what is the distance, shortest distance of every node from the starting point. Right. So whether you compute the shortest distance using BFS or using DFS or some other algorithm, that is up to you. What you need is you need to compute the shortest distance to every other node and then use that distance to compute the shortest path. Okay. Okay. So okay. BFS will work. DFS will also work. So you can use either. Okay. But uh, BFS actually uh, actually for this problem bfs is the most recommended solution dfs will not give you the shortest path hello yes madam hello? we understand dfs is for longest path and bfs is for shortest path not for no, longest path not... also actually for not exactly mm -hmm. for longest path, but DFS, the, what DFS does is once you go to a node and uh, if there is a shorter path to that particular node, you won't be knowing that you won't know whether you have reached a shorter path or you have a, reached a longer path. In mm -hmm. case there are cycles, no, then DFS yes, yes, will yes. create a lot of yes, confusion. Okay? Yes, so it is better to go with BFS. Mm -hmm. BFS will not give you the shortest path right now. Hello? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Yes, pardon. Yes. This is an undirected graph or a directed graph, madam? I think this Hello? is directed graph yeah. because some of them are not have two, di two directions. You guys have only single direction. That's why. Yeah. So, mad is madam is speaking? Uh, no, no? Hello? Know. Yes, Hello? Yeah, yeah. 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 Okay, so there yeah. is some signal problem here, so that's why it is creating some issues. So uh, it is a directed graph. Consider it is a directed graph. Okay. Okay. So, oh, ma'am, oh, one question I have. Okay, although this is a uh, question is coming from the graded assignment, but the question is that way. Is there any particular difference uh, on BFS? On a directed and undirected graph, both are same. Uh, no? BFS or DFS? BFS and DFS. Same code will run for BFS and DFS for a uh, uh, sorry, uh, same code will run for B, same BFS will run in directed and undirected graph. Yeah, BFS and DFS, you can run both on directed and undirected graphs. No, 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 no. If I so if for doing the BFS on the directed graph and be doing the BFS in undirected graph, 
okay so does it raise uh, some minute changes that need to be done on the you board? are using the dfs on the director graph and bfs on no, under no 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 i am using bfs on both director and under under director graph so do i okay. need to change in any, anything in the code the your graph is different right direction means you can have just one edge but undirected means you can travel on both the directions hello yeah i am not getting that actually what are you saying see in this example you can see my uh, see this no, no, so that i understand ma'am that i understand my question is that if i write a code for bfs okay uh, bfs code for undirected graph does yeah. this does this code equally work with the bfs in undirected uh, undirected graph see, any changes uh, uh if you have written the code for directed graph it uh undirected graph is the generalized version so if you are going for undirected graph i think you can improve the code if you have written the code in directed graph and you are using that for undirected graph then you can actually improve the code it will take like uh, it shouldn't really the time complexity can be improved okay but for the reverse direction it should be the same okay No, no, because wait. Reverse need. direction will not be the same because for undirected graph you can go on either directions, right? For undirected you have to look in the same direction. So for the reverse direction you have to write properly. If you have written directed, directed can be used for undirected. But when the where the difference is coming from, actually we will have the adjacency list, right? Whatever yeah. it is, director or undirected, we will have the adjacency list. And since we are having the adjacency list, then every time it should work na fine like see that is for directed graphs the adjacency list that is given to you that works for uh, directed graphs but for undirected graphs i can put in a condition that if i am uh, going if i have already looked between one edge then i don't need to look in the reverse direction if i am having 1 to 3 then 3 to 1 i don't need to look at all but if i am going for directed graphs i have to look yes but all, all these things will be handled through the adjacency list if you want in both direction we will make the adjacency list in that way see in the uh, if you are having an undirected edge between 1 and 3 then your adjacency list in adjacency list one will be connected to 3 and list, one will be connected to 3 okay somebody is uh, mic is on okay somebody is uh, mic that samita ba hello okay if you are having an edge between 1 and 3 can you mute it amita ba can you mute okay if you have an edge between 1 and 3 then in the adjacency list your edge will from 1 you will have a connection to 3 and from 3 you will also have a connection to 1 that is the definition yeah. of adjacency list okay mm -hmm. so when you are going from 1 you have to check for 2 3 4 and everything but when you have gone to 3 you don't really need to check for 1 but for directed graphs if you are having a edge from 1 to 3 and from 3 to 1 then you have to check for both am i making sense it means like if we have connection from 1 to 3 and 3 to 1 since we have we are done with 1 exactly so, so from 3 to 1 we will not look for that yes we have you done will not look. Two, okay since we have done from 1 to 3 exactly okay. but uh, see what you were saying that you will make the adjacency list accordingly like if 1 to 3 is there then you will not put the connection to 1 in the at list for 3 that is not possible because that is not the adjacency list for, that is not the definition of adjacency list the definition of adjacency list means if there is an edge from one node then every other node to which it is connected will come into the list for that mm -hmm. node mm -hmm. okay remember for bidirectional we can optimize the code yeah Bi for bidirectional we can optimize okay. yes mm -hmm. and ma'am uh, one more question so when you say directed graph uh, is a cyclic graph is a directed graph in uh, iitm language 
<laughs> in every language cyclic graph and directed graph are two different concepts cyclic graph means there is a cycle no, so that is okay is so when you say uh, this is a directed graph you take it as a directed yeah. graph because this statement is a lot of times written now what you uh, what i will assume by this statement directed graph is the duplicate a to b and b to a both our ages are present so what do you will assume so or when you are saying, when we are saying it is a directed graph this means that the edges have a particular direction all the edges are not some rods the you can imagine as rods and arrows if it is a directed graph then there it is an arrow there is a point we are going from one point to another point you cannot come back in that direction that is what the directed means directed graphs means all the edges are pointed towards a particular direction but undirected graphs means that is there is no direction in these edges you can go in either direction this is just a single rod you can go from first to last or you can go from last to first so if there is an undirected edge between 1 and 3 then you can go from 3 to 1 or you can go from 1 to 3 but if there is a directed edge from 3 to 1 that means you can only go from 3 to 1 you cannot go in the other direction so that is the difference between directed and undirected graph if it is said that it is an undirected graph that means all the edges are undirected but if it is being said that it is a directed graph that means all the edges are directed every edge in the graph has a direction okay okay uh one thing regarding that that uh, bidirectional graph is there so uh, yes like we were talking like we, we can optimize that but uh, yeah. uh, uh the the situation where we have to make decision that we will visit or not is based on the visited list we had sorry so we have the visited list based on that we make the decision that we will again visit that node or not that never node in dfs or bfs uh i'm trying to say that uh suppose we have a edge between 1 and 3 and 3 and 1 okay So since we have made the adjacent list, yeah. So once when we will visit from one to three, yes. Then definitely three will not visit one because we are maintaining a adjacent list where we will have the visited ones. Uh, see, are you talking about BFS or are you talking about graphs in general? means in general i wanted to talk about like in general we don't have to think separately for directed and undirected both things should work fine in general i'm thinking like that in general for this uh, python coding purposes then yes you are right no no so ma'am this, this question is coming from a graded assignment questions can you just look into the question we don't want the answer just go to the questions this is a surprising question comes Can you okay. go? No. One minute. One minute. Uh, let me reshare. Okay. Which question? Can you open it? Uh, I cannot remember. Uh, graded assignment one. Graded assignment. Okay. Not GPU one, GPU two. Graded assignment, madam. Graded assignment. Graded assignment. Okay. Yeah. Now go to the. Uh, just scroll it. Scroll it down. Which question? Yeah, I'm just I'm just scroll it down, madam. It will come. Ha huh. this is the question this is the this is the, this is the question madam you go up go down go up go up go up go up yes this is the question okay now if okay. we go to if you go to this questions okay now it is clear from the code that uh, this is a connected or disconnected graph it this will work for connected or disconnected graph but okay. how can i say in the options that this is for this uh, bfs uh, this is for bfs for um, uh, uh, directed or undirected 
uh, if you see the question right yeah. there, uh, good, slightly scroll up, ma'am. If you scroll up a little bit, may I? Yeah. Uh, if you see the question right, it, it should give you the complete graph. Uh, uh, by complete, what do, you, what do they mean by complete graph? That Darren lies the clue. I'm sorry, can you please repeat? See, he was asking, how do you find out if it is going to, if it, uh, what the answer is, right? The answer is there in the clue, which will always traverse the complete graph. So if the graph is disconnected, will it transfer the uh, complete graph, Amitabha? Yeah, I, I don't get your actually thing, sir. Uh, can you repeat, sir? No, 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 my name is Shiva. Okay, so the thing mm. is right, uh, uh, when the, during the last session, uh, TA session, Sarah was teaching about how to uh, how to traverse uh, disconnected graphs. So this is, this is, this is, like a, this code is written for connected graph, that is sure. Okay, <laughs> but the, my question is that, uh, 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 how you can say that this is for uh, uh, Directed and undirected. The one is clue is that it is uh, it is not allowing visiting again and again. So what, how you can say, ma'am? I think it's not our headache. Since adjacency list will be created in that way, whether it is directed or undirected, we will have the adjacency list. No. So, yeah, but in the option it is saying that it is a connected directed or connected undirected. Any further clue, right? Will result in the answer was. So try a try a connected graph and try a uh, uh, try a unconnected graph with this algorithm. Try a connected graph with this algorithm. Okay, sir. Thank you. It's it's try it out. You'll find out. Oh. No, sir. I I did all the assignments, but uh, these questions looks me very puzzling. Maybe I'm missing something. Okay, I will go ahead again. Okay. Wait, 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 wait. One minute, one minute. Let me just read the question. Give me a minute, okay? Okay, so, uh, yeah, he's right. To understand this, if I will explain why uh, and how it, uh, whether, how to know whether it is directed or undirected, then I will have, I will be, uh, giving you the answer so better is uh, you can uh, look at uh, tr try it try with a directed graph and try with an undirected graph a hint will be for try for the directed graph for this question for the question number one you are given a, a directed graph example right apply this algorithm on that uh, graph and you will get your answer okay okay sorry for deroting it okay it's okay no no problem no yeah. problem
I have released the other questions also, but I would suggest to like try first question first, and then you can look into second and third question. If you have any other doubts, then please let me know. Oh, excuse me, Hello, yes. Yeah, ma'am, I have a doubt in uh, DFS. Okay. Uh, actually, I was trying to implement uh, DFS in with iterative approach by maintaining the stack, external stack. Okay. So, okay. Uh, actually, I'm getting something wrong. So if I could share that. Yeah, 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 yeah. You can share. In this one, is my screen is visible. Uh, this is for today's problem. No, no, ma'am. Just DFS traversal. I was trying. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Should okay. I zoom in or? Oh uh, yes. Zoom it on. Zoom in. Zoom in. Okay. Zoom in. Okay. Okay. Wait. 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 So what is the problem? What is the problem? Uh, it's not getting the correct answers. Okay. So why exactly did you have the first if statement after why? If uh, not of this one. Yes. Uh, I'm checking if uh, the current vertex that I have popped from the stack, if yeah, uh, uh, if it is not visited, I'm, okay, then I'm marking it. Yes, it is visited, and then uh, the traversal list I was maintaining, I appended to that. That the answer we need traversal list. And no, no. That, See, what is happening is you are. Appending to the or oh, traversal list you are appending. Okay. Yeah, the answer that I want. Okay. Okay. And what is DFST? Uh, that is the stack for DFS I'm maintaining. The stack from where we will pick the elements. No, no, you are uh, okay. Okay, we are maintaining stack. Okay, but you need to make a pop zero. In the first line, current vertex is equal to pop zero. Now you want to maintain stack or you want to maintain a queue? Oh, uh, we. Uh, I was maintaining stack actually. No, no. So this pop will pop the at the from the last. Oh. You need to pop it from the last only, no? If it is yeah. a stack, yeah, that stack oh, okay. need to pop from the last. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, sorry. And, yeah, uh, sorry. and irrespective of that, I think in DFS, uh, making it a queue or a stack will not matter. I think. No, no. In DFS, you need a stack. Yeah. Oh, ha ha. Tabhi to niche sa queue karo. Yes, ma'am. Oh, it is a date first, not date first. Okay, uh, sorry. This, this is a date first. Ah, yeah. yeah. Hmm. 
Mohammed, this is not exactly dead for search, huh? Because in, you are not suspect it. You are doing something like a breakfast search in the for loop for advance uh, adjacent vertexes. Ha, uh, like uh, I think we do the same for DFS also, na? We look for the neighbor, and whenever but there is a neighbor. But you are Yeah, but here in DFS, if you get it, then you go to the next child of that. Okay, so here how are you going to the child? Are you actually doing the BFS actually? No, look no, the, no, no, the no, the sorry. no. I'm not no, getting what you're saying, Anupa, because I think it is correct. We will Come use the recursion, no? Since we are we no, have we appended the neighbor. No, no, we have appended the neighbor now. So when we will check the stack, so the parent that we has been appended. <laughs> We will go to that child, the parent that has been appended at last. So it should work fine now. Okay, can you run it and tell me uh, why it is showing you the wrong answer? Like what answer it should show and what answer it is showing? Can you just mm -hmm. run it? This one. Madam, and a small query with this or question. Uh, yes. What should we return if uh, we cannot reach from start to end? If you cannot reach from start to end, then uh, you should return just the uh, a list containing only the start vertex. Only the start vertex. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Can you run it, Aladdin? Yes, ma'am. Uh, this one we are getting. Uh, I think it's the difference. Uh, Okay. Zero to two. Zero and two. Okay. Actually, we are also doing the uh, correct reversal, but uh, I think na I missed this. I think. No, 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 no. Wait, 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 wait. Go down, go down. Yes. What was the expected Graph. output? Expected output is zero two four three one. Zero to two first. Okay. What you are getting? What you are getting? I went zero to one first. Zero two zero one three two four. Okay, yes. so what is happening is see when you are at zero, if you put the st in the stack, if you put two one two three and one, so yes. when you will pop, you will pop one three and then two. Yes, so what you need is you need two three and then one, so you have to push one first. Then you have to push three. Then you have to push two. Okay. Yes. Yes. So uh, the reverse of this, now Like. Yeah, you have to push the reverse. Uh, yeah. I tried, ma'am. Uh, like. Uh, I pop, uh, mention, pop zero will not work. Ma'am, since it is, it has mentioned that we have to go from left. Yes. So yes. I think that's so why. So if you have to go from left to right, then you yes. have to push from right to left. Right to left. So what I tried, ma'am, uh, will it not uh, solve the issue? If uh, suppose I have the adjacency uh, list as like like two three one, but if I okay. will store this list in reverse order, so yes, you can store the list in the reverse order. But the uh, the question says that it is given the adjacency list in one particular order, right? You don't have a, a handle on that now, right? Okay, okay. So uh, where we can improve in the code, like uh, uh, in, in that the in code, mm -hmm. in the code. See when for adjacency vertex of adjacency list current vertex, right? Mm -hmm. There you want to there you want to append in the reverse order. Okay. okay. So given a list, when you have to reverse it, you can just write colon colon minus one. Uh, colon, oh, means we append and so can can't we insert at first index, uh, zeroth index? Means if you can insert like this. Will it do same? Sorry. Like insert at zero index. If you are inserting at zeroth index, then uh, see if you are in the inserting in the zeroth index, then it will no longer be a stack. Hmm. Hmm. Suppose there are two el elements already there in the stack, then what will you do? Hmm. So we have to like uh, reverse the list. 
exactly you have to reverse it okay. so to reverse it you can just use colon colon minus 1 uh, so we will so address uh, the list of current vertex then uh, again we will reverse this na sir ma'am no 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 go to the for loop Hmm. In the for loop. For loop statement. In the for loop statement. Uh mm huh. -hmm. Before colon, within hmm. braces, write colon colon minus one. Uh, this current uh, vertex. After na? that. This no, no 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 no. After that, you have to add another braces there. Oh, let me tell you. We have to reverse which list? That adjacency list. You have to see. When you are taking the adjacency vertex, mm -hmm. its neighbors are in the adjacency list of current vertex, right? Mm -hmm. Adjacency list of C U curve vertex is giving you the list containing the neighbors of add vertex, right? Yes. You want to reverse that now. Okay, I want to reverse this list. So uh, this entire thing. You want to reverse that entire thing. So here I have to like. Yeah, those braces should not be there. Will this be the opening of that braces will be after curve vertex closing braces? The opening of this. We we have we want to reverse this, no? I think I'm not getting it. Wait, 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 wait. Just wait, wait, wait. Go write a statement before that for loop. Write a statement. Yes. Before for loop, before hmm. for loop, yeah, there. Right, hmm. let l equals to. Sorry, right neighbors. Any i neighbor equals to. Adjacency list of curve vertex. What is this now? For uh, the yeah. current vertex, this neighbor, this neighbor, uh, any list. neighbor list. Hmm. Yeah. yeah. What does it contain? For the current vertex, what are the neighbors? Neighbors, yes. Right. So for zero, it is storing the neighbors. So now the order is two, one, three. three. Sorry, uh, two, three, two, three, three, two, three, one. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So now I have to reverse it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So press and enter there. Uh, X is equal to. Uh, let's say neighbor one. N e i g h one. Right. Neighbor one is equal to neighbor neighbor of n e i g h within braces colon colon minus one. Hmm. Okay, hmm. this will reverse your reverse entire it. list. Hmm. Hmm. Okay, now you need to append this list to your uh, stack, right? Hmm. So the okay. one we are okay. we were traversing. Ha. Huh? Okay. 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 So here is one more trick. Here is one more trick I am telling you. Okay, mm -hmm. go to neighbor. Uh, that go to the previous line. Okay, which one? Line number twenty one. Twenty one. Okay. Hmm. Press and enter there. Mm hmm. And write DFS underscore ST the stack dot mm. extend e x t e n d extend. Neighbor one. Okay, so neighbor one will so get. So what this added. will do is in this okay, order it I will get added. Okay. So the difference between append and extend is in append it will just copy paste the list into the end of the current list. Mm -hmm. Okay. What extend will do it? It will take all the elements in the first list and it will put in the uh, new list in same the order. list in the same order. In the okay. same order. Okay, okay. Okay, so you don't require that uh, for loop, but you need to check whether it is visited or not. So I just wanted to give that uh, explain that extend part. So that is why I just mm. told you to write okay, that. But okay. you need to check if it is visited or not. That's why you need the for loop. Hmm. For visited. But huh. in case, if you need a for loop to just look into every element and uh, append. append it to another list, then the you can just use that. Hmm. 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 Okay. Okay. So, okay. Okay. So the thing was. So you can oh. remove that extend part and you can edit this part, right? Hmm. Hmm. Yes. Yes. This list. Uh, we we have to in this list. 
Yes. Okay. And uh, one thing, uh, since uh, we are so there, it will go. Neighbor one will go there. Neighbor one will go there. Hmm. Here we will go. Neighbor one. Yes. And you have to remove twenty-two line also. Because we have uh, there. Uh, yes. Now you can show. Yeah, you were saying mm. something. Else. Yes, yes, yes. It is now waiting. Hmm. Okay, got it, got it. So since they have um, uh, said about the order, so we have to take care that the thing we have in the DFS stack. So that's Sorry? Uh, since they mentioned about the order, so we have to keep uh, like we have to take care of that. Like in the adjacency list. Okay, okay, got it. Any other doubt? Man, I tried to solve this problem, but I am failing three tests out of five. Which problem? in this first problem problem uh, one. okay one minute um, what is your id or something id uh, your... there, you can see sorry id i think is from my name bhanu okay yes bhanu prasad 35 317, right? The th last three uh, digits of your number. I don't know where to see, but it's, uh, it is Bhanu Pratap 35. Okay, okay, one minute. One minute, give me, give me a minute, let me just. You are using a queue. Yes. Why do you need all of that? You can just use the array and work it as a queue, right? Okay, no problem. Uh, visited, traversed, trying a list of keys, visited of a visited of points. Uh, visited, you are declaring it as a dictionary. Yes. Traversed is the list. Traversed the list that I have to return. Okay. Uh, for I in see you are not computing the sortest distance at all why it is not breadth for search no 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 i'm not asking you the breadth for search what you need is you want to compute the sortest distance from this start point to this end point how will you know that this is the sortest distance whatever route you are computing here you are traversed uh, i'm I agree that this will give you a route from the start to the end. But how do you know that this is the shortest path? Because in breadth first search, uh, we always uh, process with the nearest one. Okay, okay.
wait let me see okay Ah, yeah, this is the wrong. You should dequeue at the end. Okay, sorry. That is that. Sorry, 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 sorry.
हेलो भानु यस मैडम या आई एम मेकिंग सम चेंजेस इन योर प्रोग्राम ओके हम्म यस गुड नो प्रॉब्लम Oh madam I am thinking something that yeah. I haven't uh, flag this uh, visited because I am checking yeah. not visited but I am not assigning any visited to true in my loop Yes yes
Yeah, it's probably that. Because this thing I'm checking for, but I haven't assigned. Now I'm thinking where should I assign it? And then, yes, here, here I should. Hmm. Let's That's save and check. Let's check how much. Oh. <laughs> now I got three other test fails. That was a. I don't know what is happening because when I'm pick. Giving this print statement, it is showing. It is passing the cases. See, if I'm using this print statement, then all the cases are getting passed. Okay, this is correct. Returning this is start. Yeah, that should be right. Because in that case, if it doesn't match, it will print out one here at line number forty-five. Sorry. It should not be. If we return this start blank uh, blank, मतलब start array with only one element, and at the last result at line number forty-five, it will print one. But if uh, it doesn't uh, match, it should not be print one. No, no, it should print one. Like for case two, in this example, you will not be having any uh, connection from eight to zero. You cannot go to zero from eight. Okay, there are no edges from eight to zero, but no paths from eight to zero. So the answer should be one. Okay. That part is correct. If it is not uh, reaching this traversed part, then uh, it should give me. uh only the start but i'm not getting why it is getting passed if i am printing traversed even it is passed uh, three cases it passed if no, it is passing all the cases all the cases yeah it should print traversed multiple times so there should be multiple times the multiple lines of result will be there and still it is passing all of that can you tell me how how can we assign this uh, these cases wait wait wait, wait 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 here is what is your mistake see whenever you are visiting suppose there is one node okay a uh, one then you are going to from one you go to two three and four okay one has neighbors two three and four and two has a neighbor five okay right so what your traverse tree are doing is it will first start from one now it is going to neighbors of one for every neighbor of one that is two three and four all of them have not been visited right so what it is doing is it is enqueuing all of them 2 3 and 4 simultaneously it is also appending all of them to traversed but your traversed should only contain the path 1 to 2 2 to 3 sorry 2 to 5 it should not contain 3 and 4 but okay. it is containing 3 mm -hmm. and 4 hmm that is where the error is okay yes yeah so fix it okay Okay, let me figure out. <laughs> yes. Correct. Okay. Any other doubts?
Ma'am, can you explain problem three? Hello? Yes, ma'am. Uh, can you explain problem number three? The question or the solution? Uh, question itself, because we have to pass this preference list inside, no? One minute, one minute. OK. Yeah, what is the doubt here? Hello? Uh, yes. Yeah, this preference list, no, uh, which was uh, given, no? Yes. I, I'm not able to connect with this uh, input and output. Uh, preference list is, uh, if we prefer one, after zero, we can go for one directly, no? In one. the sample output, in the graph also. One minute, let us go. Okay. Give me five minutes, okay? Okay, ma'am.
मैडम कैन आई आस्क यू समथिंग रिगार्डिंग दिस ओप एग्जाम यस हाउ इट विल बी कंडक्टेड आई मीन इन व्हिच एनवायरमेंट विल बी इन यूज दिस रेप्लेट और अदर थिंग uh i i am not sure regarding that actually so uh this is like the first term i am i have joined that ptl so i'm not really aware of whether or uh, if it will be conducted on uh, ptl uh, replit or something else okay, okay thank you i i will enquire and i'll let you know oh sure Ma'am, will you discuss the solution on for these problems? Yes, I will be discussing the solution for the problems. Just give me a minute. I will discuss. Like I will just uh, like I am trying to see what exactly this problem number three is asking, and I will let you know, and then we will discuss the solutions. Okay. Okay. हेलो ओके सी यू यू कैन नॉट लाइक फॉर द द प्रेफरेंस लिस्ट इफ गो टू डैग एक्चुअली यू कैन सी दैट यू कैन सी माय स्क्रीन राइट नो मैम ओके वन मिनट लेट मी जस्ट रीशेयर इट okay see if you see this is the adjacency list okay okay so when you go to the uh, these are the preference orders so when you go to this topological uh, uh, graph when you draw the graph for that adjacency list you will get this graph okay which is given in topo lib okay? okay so this is the graph for that now if you see for preference zero has no preference sorry where is the thing okay so here zero doesn't have any preference so you can start with zero right there is no dependency to zero now zero's preference is 1 2 and 3 so you can actually go preference order 1 is there so you can actually go to sorry one zero Leads to z- from zero. You have the dependencies to one, two, and three. Okay, so you can go to one. You should be able to go to one. Okay, yeah. but one also has a dependency from three. Okay. So until three is done, you cannot start one. Yeah. yeah until sure. five is done, you cannot start one. Okay. Okay. So that is why you need to go to two only. You can go to three also, but, but here two is the uh, preference. Yeah. Okay. 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 Thank you. Thank you. So, should I start discussing, or should we give it like ten more minutes? Hello. we shall start discussing when any how we are not reaching at the result i think okay so we'll go to discuss first pro- we can discuss the first problem first so this problem is basically we need to uh, for the first problem what we have is we are given this train routes which is basically uh if we if i just decode this first problem it is basically given that we are given a graph which is a directed graph and we want to compute the shortest path from one node which is the start node to the end node okay so for that i need to know what are the shortest distance from every node to every other node okay and how i am reaching to that node so when i am going from one sorry when i am going from one node to another node i also need to store its parent 
from which node i am coming to that node in the shortest path what is the previous node that i have encountered that i will be storing and i will also store what is the uh, shortest distance from start to that and uh, to that particular node so here i will be write, using writing a, i will write a bfs first okay you can see my uh, screen right yes ma'am okay so i will take the a list and i will perform a bfs from the start node okay so for that i will be having visited and parent sorry sorry sorry, sorry. okay i will be using two uh, dictionaries one is visited dictionary and another is parent dictionary so visited dictionary will store the uh, uh, whether a node has been uh, visited no i don't need the visited dictionary i need the distance okay so i need to store a distance to every node and a parent to every node okay so instead of storing in different dictionaries what i will be doing is i will use a shorthand notation where i will make one dictionary which is my d here let's say one dictionary and in that dictionary for every node i will store a tuple okay so for every node what d will store is d will be a dictionary where every node zero i will be storing a tuple the first value of the tuple will be the distance and the second value of the tuple will be the parent from which the node uh, is being accessed okay to reach to this node from the start node what is the distance to this node that will come in the first value of the tuple or let's say let's go with a list okay i can use it as a list also either a tuple or a list doesn't really matter so i will be uh, store in the first value of that list will be the distance to this node the minimum distance to this node from the start and the parent of that node through which i am accessing this node okay this will be the structure of my d okay so this is my dictionary now what i am i will do is for every uh, uh key i will go for every node i will set this dictionary values to be uh, this will be infinity and the other one will be none okay i am just going to set this as an empty dictionary okay empty list so for every dictionary element so every id i will be storing a empty list and just let me just disable this okay so now for the source node i'll begin with the source node i'll also use a queue and for that queue what i will do is i will just i i'll not i'm not going to create a queue class and everything i just use a list and i will use this list as a queue so basically an array representation of the queue so i will take this list and i will be using this list as a queue i am not making the classes and everything for queue okay so here i'll begin with the source start node so for the start node what we can do is we have this uh, Uh, first of all i can append q dot append i'll append the start node to q then i will set the values for the start node which is d of i sorry d of start is equal to 0 and the start node does not have any parent okay so that's why i will set for the start node i'll set the values 0 and none okay and uh, i have for, i have appended to the queue now what i'll do is i'll look into the i'll start the loop while loop okay so while queue that means this means that queue is the list so you can use this representation in uh, python if you are writing this uh, while q means if length this exactly means that 
this is equivalent to writing this while length of q is not equal to 0. Okay. So, if length of q is not equal to 0, then q is not empty. Right. The list is not empty. So, it will give a true value. Okay. Any value, but it will not be equal to 0. So, this, this statement will not result into false until and unless my q is not equal to 0. Okay. So, while q I will no, pop the first value u is equal to q dot pop 0. So, I pop the first node and then I will append, I will uh, edit the length of the all the other nodes. Okay. So, for v in for every node which is a neighbor of u. Okay. For every node which is a neighbor of u, I will fix its distance and I will fix the parent also. What will be the distance? The distance of u from start plus 1 because v is a neighbor of u. So, the distance from start to v will be equal to the distance of start to u plus u, plus u to v. I know the distance from u to v is equal to 1 because it is an edge. It is a single edge. So, what I will do is I will start from the, from the start to u whatever is the distance plus the distance from u to v will be 1. So, now distance to v is equal to what? Distance to u which is stored in distance to u is uh, distance to u plus 1, right? So, now distance to u is stored in this dictionary, right? The first value of this dictionary. So, D of U will give me this uh, list, right, containing the distance and the parent. So, the first element of this list is the distance. So, I will put 0 here. Okay. Am I, is this clear? Okay. Otherwise. Hello? Should I go with two different dictionaries, uh, distance and parent, or should I just go with one dictionary consisting of a list of uh, list, each with distance and parent? Can you just confirm this? If this is getting complicated, then I'll go with a single dic different dictionaries. Yes, ma'am, please go with different dictionaries. Okay, let's go with different dictionaries. So, one dictionary is my distance. The other dictionary is parent. Okay. And I will set both of them to uh, some random values. Okay. I don't need to set anything. Okay. Sorry. This distance of i equals to my. This one and parent of i equals to nine. Okay, this is clear, right? This much is clear, right? This initialization part. Yes, ma'am. Can somebody confirm? Hello. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma okay. So now. Distance of start is equal to 0 and parent of start is equal to none. Right? This is clear now. Right? Hello? Okay. Yes, yes, so, yeah. So, now to compute the distance to V. Now, my distance to V is equal to distance to v is equal to my distance to u plus 1. Is this statement clear to everybody? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am, because it is the neighbor, no? Yes, it is the neighbor. So, distance from u to distance of the start, basically this means the distance of start to v is equal to the distance of start to u plus the distance of u to v. 
so u to v distance is 1 because v is the neighbor of u okay and distance of start to u is in this location distance of u the, this statement is clear to everybody right yes ma'am so now i set the parent who should be the parent of v now u u okay so now what i will do is i'll just append this to this will be appended to the q v but notice that it may be the case that your v has already been visited right so if a v has already been visited by bfs that means what it is already having a shorter distance from start so i should not update it right so this should only be performed only if v is not visited right so for that what we will do is uh, i will make this initial distance to be some infinity value let's say it is minus one if distance of v is equal to minus 1 then only i will be performing this is this clear hello can somebody confirm yes, this if this is clear to everybody yes ma'am okay so now i have the distance to every node and i have the parent via which i can reach the shortest distance to every node and the parent on the path to that shortest distance to that node right so i will return this to to my function okay so once this is done i will write the main uh, function which is the minimum hops function okay so my minimum hops function okay so what my minimum hops function will do my minimum hops function will first of all compute this distance to every other node okay so i will perform I need this distance and parent is equal to BFS of a list from a start. Okay, I now got the distance from this start to every other node and the parent of every other node that I have now. So, what I will do is I will put the end in the uh, in a list i will put the i'll make a traversed list i'll make this, there will be a path list okay so if my if the distance to the end node is equal to minus 1 what does this mean this means that there is no path from start to end right so i will return this uh, list which is according to whatever is given in the question okay but if this does not hold true that means there is a path from my uh, this from my start to my end okay so that is why i have to construct the path so what i will do is i will start with appending the end to my path okay and then i will construct this path backwards i will start by appending the end node to the path and then i will go to its parent whatever is the parent i will pick and put it in the path then i will go to its previous parent and i will put that in the path and i will do that until i reach the end okay so can you please repeat what are you saying 
okay so i have my path i know the i know the parent i know the shortest distance so how can i recreate my path that is the question now right so what i will do is i will just go to the end i will put end in my path then i will put another i will pick up another uh, i will pick up its parent which on the shortest path i know what is the parent of this node right so if i have the no node i can put its parent into my path that i can do right so once i put the parent i will go to its parent let's say i have 1 2 3 4 5 that is my shortest path so how will i recreate the path only if i have the parent information and no other information that is the question right so what i will do is i will go to the end which is my 5 year i put 5 to this path then i will go to its parent which is 4 year the shortest path has 4 in the parent so my parent of 5 will be equals to 4 so i will put 4 i'll insert 4 into the path now then i will go from 4 i will go what i'll find what its parent is so its parent is 3 so i'll put pick up 3 and i'll put parent of 4 is 3 in this dictionary in this dictionary parent of 4 is 3 so in the shortest path parent of 4 is 3 which means that in the shortest path once i go to 3 then only i can go to 4 to go to 4 i have to cross 3 okay so now i know that if i have 4 the previous element in that list in the path list the previous element should be 3 right so what i will do is i will have this path until while something happens i will fill this later okay the condition will come to this condition later what i have is in this path i know the end element is equal to path of 0 right my path of 0 is the end element so i will put an element before that i will find its parent i will insert that parent before this element okay so what is the parent now uh Parent, parent of end parent of end yes so my parent of end is the parent whatever should be the parent of end in the path right so i will put it in the front of the path i will put it in front of end okay so this should be inserted at the zeroth element of path so here i will write path dot insert at the index 0 this is this clear to everybody yes ma'am hello ma'am we can also app append and then reverse the in the end you know yes you can do that you i can here this is one way the other way is a uh, path dot append parent of end and at the end what we can do is path equals to path of colon colon minus 1 either way is allowed okay so let's go with this okay whatever is also called. in this case end will be the path of minus 1 Yes, yes, yes. Wait, let me just write this new, new one. So n equals to path of minus one, and path dot append, and once this loop ends, I will have path here. Okay. now tell me what should be the condition of this while loop where should i end where should i stop i will stop when i have reached the starting node right so if my end is equal to start then i can just stop here right hello hello Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, 
is this making is this uh, clear yes ma'am so then finally i can just return my path hello okay so if this is clear then this is actually the solution and now here you can notice we actually do not no require this distance this distance the only reason we need this distance is for this part where we uh, need to know if there is a uh, path to the end or not but that can be resolved here itself because parent of this uh, parent of every if we, here we are setting the parent of every node to be none initialize in, in the initialization section so if we we can say here if distance of end is not equal to 1 we don't want to use this distance then you can just say here that if parent of end is equal to none that means we have not reached the parent right so that means there is no path from start to end this can be used here and we may not use distance the reason i use distance is just to make this clear the, uh, the bfs part clear okay so that is why i was using distance and this part also just to make this clear uh, clarity and to make this distinction i was using this distance here but we don't require this distance part okay is this clear or any doubts madam it is failing the task what is failing the task failing the test when i which one which one this solution what Okay, let me reshare. There is some problem here. Oh, can you see my screen now? Yes, madam. Okay. Let me see why it failed. It's probably some error or something.
yes it is failing that test okay yeah here we should have this end is appended Hello, can you see my screen? No, ma'am. No, madam. Okay, wait. Actually, there is some problem here with the signal. Okay, so can you see my screen now? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, the error was here. End should be parent, right? I am putting the par. Uh, I am not changing it anymore. So initially, my path of zero is my. Uh, parent so here i will be putting i can put parent of zero parent of end and end here. this is the borderline case actually which was failing okay so what was happening is initially I was having the start value. So I was just putting its parent. I was instead of putting that particular value uh, inside, I was not putting the parent there. So that my borderline case was failing. Okay. Hello. Hello. <clears throat> yes, madam. Yeah. So this is clear, right? The idea was saying just the borderline case was supposed to be handled here. So if initially whatever I had, I, the order was different. I was supposed to insert the parent and then change the end to that parent. Okay. Or I have to change the end to the parent and then insert that end. Okay. So the order was uh, wrong earlier. Now it is correct. Okay. Any doubts regarding this? Madam, in the next problem, if you could... Um... Just illustrate first and then apply the code. It would be better for us to understand. Which one? From next problem onwards? From next one. Yes, from next one. First try in the artboard and then we will understand the concept. Then you will write the code. Then yes, ma'am. Please uh, explain step and how to um, apply some, which, algorithm, which algorithm. Then it oh. will be helpful. I mean, just illustrate the concept on the paper or any hand drawing tool. Okay, okay, one minute, okay. So,
Wait, let me share the artboard. Can you see my screen? No, madam. No, yes. Now, can you see my screen? Mm, yes. Okay. Okay. Let's see. Let's. This is a graph. Okay. Hmm. So, in this graph. I have to go from uh, take an example. For example, suppose I want to go from zero to one. Okay. This is my starting node, and this is my ending node. I have to go from zero to one. So, what are the different ways to go from 0 to 1? There are many ways. You can go to yes. 0 to 6, then 1, 0 to 3, you then 1. Go to 0 to 3, 3 to 1. Or you can go from uh, 0 yes. to 2, 2 to 3, and 3 to 1. Okay. Yes. Similarly, yes. we can also go from 0 to uh, 2, 0 to 2. Oh. Two, four, five, six, and then one. We can two to four, four one. to five, five to six, six to one, and then there are many other ways also, right? Yes, right. Okay. So now, what are the maximum possible ways? So what I want is, I have. See, let's just write down the ways here: zero, two, or uh, two, three, one. Then 0 to uh, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1 and so on. There are many ways. Okay. But what yeah. I want is once this 2 is included, I cannot have 2 in, in any other new ways. Okay. So, I suppose I include 0, 2, 3, 1. Okay. This is my way. I am going to use this path. So, what I will do is, I will just delete 2 and 3 now. I will delete 2 and then I will delete 3. So, what is remaining? I will remove this surge now. This surge is gone. This surge is gone. This All these edges are gone. 3 to 0 is gone. This surge is also gone now. Right? So, what are the remaining ways now? Now, the only way is 0 to 6, 6 to 1. Right? So, I have 0 to 6, 6 to 1. So, once I write this, I can just remove this. I will have to remove 6 now. If 6 is, 6 is gone, that means this is gone and this is also gone. So, my resulting after this 2, the resulting at, uh, graph will look something like this. There will be 5 here. There is 1 here, there is an edge here, and then there is 0 here without any edges. So, this was already gone when I deleted, sorry, sorry, there was 4 also. This edge was there. Is this clear? Can mm -hmm. somebody confirm if this is clear? Mm, madam, I couldn't understand why you are deleting. Okay, why I am deleting is because I have this condition. If you can go to that question uh, itself, in the question it is written that uh, once you have gone through a node, you cannot go through that same node except the first and the last. One minute, madam. Are you talking about problem number two? Yes, I am talking about problem number two. Okay. 
Sorry. Uh, see, without going through the same node again, with exception to endl and n two. I'll just. Uh, <laughs> show you the question this is the question can see the question now yes see in the question we have that in the undirected graph you cannot go uh, in the undirected graph without going through the same node again with exception to n1 and n2 so i can go through n1 and n2 but i cannot go through any other node so how do i remove those nodes how will i make sure that i cannot go through this node again if i am not going to that node again which means that i am not deleting that from the graph but i will not be considering that any more so that is why to represent that part i use this deletion symbols this deleting was just to make you understand that we cannot go via these paths so all these paths are now inaccessible does that answer your question yes madam okay okay so yes, now okay. let us go through a different process instead of going through 0 2 3 1 0 6 1 let us go through another process what we will do now here is we will go from 0 to 3 directly and from 3 to 1 we will go now okay so my new way out here is going to be my new solution will have 0 to 3 3 to 1 this will be my first path okay if this is my first path so if 0 to 3 3 to 1 is my first path so now i cannot go via 3 any more so all the paths to 3 are inaccessible to imagine this in some real life example imagine that your uh, once you have gone through that path some kind of an uh, road block is happening you cannot go through that again through that point again okay so all of these roads to uh, roads are all of these paths are blocked i cannot go through this three any more so all this uh, edges are blocked now so this is equivalent to just uh, i'm just marking them as cross here okay so all the other possible edges are available so now what are other edges to one now or the other paths to one from zero i'll go from zero, zero to, to six zero, zero to six, to six and then Six to one. Okay, so my new path will be from zero to six, and then six to one. So here, my next path is that I am going to going through is zero to six, then six to one. Okay, so now this node can no longer be accessed. So now this path is gone. This path is gone, and every other edge connecting to six is also cannot be accessible. because i cannot go to 6 anymore so all of these edges have now become inaccessible so i cannot go via these edges is there any other path to one now no yes 0 yes yes 0 to 2 4 5 1 0 to 4 5 1 right? right so now let's see if we are going via okay so this is my green path hmm Two to four, four to one. Okay. So now, if I am beginning with zero, three, one, then I am having three different paths. But if I am beginning with zero, two, three, one, I am having only two different paths. Hmm. Okay. So what I want is, I want this sequence. I want the maximum possible number of paths. if i keep on removing like this then the maximum possible number of paths should be returned what is the maximum possible number of paths this way okay that is the question 
Okay. Is that not uh, how number of uh, all pass? Sorry? I mean, mm, I thought it is mm, the number of total paths. It is not the total number of paths. Every time I am using a path, I will be removing all the nodes in that path. I cannot go to those nodes again. So all yes, of those yes. nodes are now inaccessible. Okay, that is the first condition. Mm -hmm. The second condition is I want the maximum number of paths that way. If I keep on removing this, then what is the maximum number of paths that I can obtain? Hmm. Okay. 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 So it's there in the question here. One, uh, every time we are going through a path without going through the same node again with exception to end one and end two, I cannot go through the same node again and again. Okay. And also, I want the maximum possible number of routes. Okay. So, should we iterate all of path and then count the number how many ways? From this so the way out here is we will use a small variant of BFS. Okay, so I will stop this and I will share my. I'll go to the coding part. Hmm. So to code this to solve this problem, what we need is we will need a small variant of BFS. I'll just copy paste the code I did in the first uh, for the first question. Okay, so this was the BFS code. Okay. But in this BFS code, we will be adding a small uh, variant. What is the variant? My variant will be, uh, where is that? Here. I will take along with this, I will take a prevent list. Okay. My prevent list will contain the list of nodes I cannot visit. Okay. So, what I will do is, every time I am going to check for an edge, I will also check that the uh, vertex is not in the prevent list. Okay? V should not be in the prevent list. Then only I will consider that. Is this making sense? Hello? Mm -hmm. Hello? Yes, Is this clear? Yes, clear? Hello? Actually, Hello? it's very difficult to digest. Yeah, this is very difficult to digest. I know that. Yes. I, I think we should need more practice. In yes, you need. Uh, actually, you need to think about this. This question will require some time to solve. Okay, so uh, you need some uh, time actually to understand what is happening. Okay, so I am just going to give you the solution, and I'll just discuss the solution. You can think about this uh, in your spare time. Okay. Mm -hmm. So this was the BFS. So my BFS actually computes the shortest list from so, shortest path from a node from the starting node to the ending node, provided it cannot go through this prevent list through all of these no, removed nodes. Okay, once all these nodes have been removed, you cannot go through that node. So the, those nodes. So that is why we are removing these nodes 
and we are not going through those nodes at all okay we will be going in a very diff in in the other paths so along the other paths what is the distance that i am going to compute okay so i will be checking whether v is there in prevent or not here also i will make sure that every i should be in a list of keys but i should not be in if i i should not be in this prevent list okay this is a variant of bfs you can try this actually so uh, in bfs i am giving you the condition that you cannot visit this list of nodes so i am giving you an extra input here this input says that you cannot visit this set of nodes so that is the prevent what the uh, this is the variant of bfs so once this is done what i can do is i will find a path from the parent to the start okay Hmm. One second. Okay. So what this does is this will be just finding the paths. This is similar to the last question what we did. It just keeps on finding a path from the parent to the end using this. Ah, uh, parent is basically our ah uh, this parent. list from this parent list using this parent list i am trying to find the find the shortest path from start to end which is basically what we did in the minimum hops program in the last question right so now the main solution is this so for the main solution what we will do is we will keep on computing the shortest path see if we have the shortest path then we are removing a smaller number of nodes right so what we want to do is we will just remove a smaller number of nodes at each time so in the beginning i will find we will find a shortest path and then we will just remove that path from the graph okay once that path is removed we will find another shortest path and then we will remove that path from the list sorry path from the graph and we will keep on doing that so once we keep on removing the shortest path the resulting will be the uh, long maximum number maximum possible number of uh, paths is this clear hello uh, okay wait let me share that hello yes madam you can listen okay let me share the art actually here a uh, board here see if we are going by a longer paths then we will be removing more number of nodes yes you agree with that so if we are yes. removing more number of nodes that means we are removing more number of edges so the number of paths by which we can reach one will keep on decreasing right so what we yeah. want is every time we should reach one from 0 to 1 every time we should reach one why i a shorter path if i can go to one by this shorter path which is 0 to 3 and then 3 to 1 then when i am removing i will i will be removing only a smaller number of uh, nodes within this on this path right so if i am removing a smaller number of nodes then a bigger portion of the graph will be remaining hello can someone confirm yes, next uh, yes uh, number of nodes will uh, no large number of nodes are remaining but exactly. it is depending on the graph if you delete a node that connected with many too many nodes and you delete that then we have decreased the number of options 
yes i agree but uh, what if i agree with you but what if it is uh, like no uh, well the, if it is connected to too many nodes and too many paths and we are removing that then i agree that it will be a problem okay mm. but uh, well actually for the graph that is given this solution for this pur purposes it is not the case that uh, this central nodes connected to too many nodes this these are not the examples which are given in the uh, test cases for you okay so for the test cases that is given to you we are having minimum number it is like e evenly distributed mostly okay so uh, it should be given in the question which is not there but the solution should be like we should be removing nodes uh, through which actually we should be removing nodes which has lower number of connections to other nodes i agree with you on that case okay but mm -hmm. here we will be going with the minimum number of nodes okay 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 hello yes okay madam okay okay so then if that is the case this is what was being done here uh i'll stop sharing okay so this is the solution we will be sharing the solution with you uh, by next week or something and then you can you can think about this problem and then you can look into the solution okay so let's go to the third problem because it's already 10 15 10 17 or something and uh, so the third problem is basically we are given this dependency list okay which is basically a graph a directed graph okay so this graph represents that from 0 we can go to 1 we can go to 2 or we can go to 3 okay so this is how we this is what the dependency list is so from 0 until 0 is finished we cannot start 1 until 1 is done we cannot start 7 because 7 is dependent on 1 okay so this is a directed graph which uh, is actually acyclic also because there are this dependencies we cannot uh, so from zero we have we can on once zero is completed we can only go to one we can start one two three only when zero is finished okay similarly we are also given a preference list so one has a preference before three three has a preference before two Two as a preference before six. Like two should be like if we have two and six simultaneously, then I want to finish two first, and then I can go to six. Okay. Okay. So, okay. Uh, then I think it's a depth first search, and this is the not preference table sorting. is given. This is the topological sorting. Yes, topological sorting. Yes, we want the order. The depth first search. No? Yes. breadth first search okay so this is breadth basically first. not breadth first depth first you are right depth first search mm. yes okay so this is basically the topological sorting uh, algorithm this question is uh, topological sorting okay so here let's say this is the stopolev uh, graph this is a graph for this particular example which was given here for this example this is the graph and in this graph what happens is i want a topological sort of this so here from 0 we have to start with 0 but then i can go to either 2 or 3 only i sorry i can go only to 2 only okay so i will go to 2 now once 2 mm -hmm. is finished i am finished with 0 and 2 so one one minute I can go to, yes one one minute madam we uh, from 0 we can go to One, two, and three. Yes, but once zero is over, you cannot go to one here because one has a dependency at five. 
one also has an edge coming from three. So until three and five are done, I cannot go to one. Okay, okay. We I think we need to first sort the whole node with the number of incoming. No, not as incoming. According to this preference order. See, uh, see. Sorry, uh, you have to short these nodes according to the incoming. Why do you need that? You can just do the topological the, sorting. Because, right? Yes, but without the incoming sorting. I cannot understand why are you deleting. Yes, yes. You part. need the in, in degrees. You need the yes, in edges, in right? That is what you are yes, saying, yes. right? Yes, yes, in degrees. Yes, you Number need to in sort. degrees, and then we have to sort according to this preference table. Yes. First of all, according to in degree, and then according to the preference order. Okay. Then first we should write the in degree of each node, and then we will start. How many node have uh, zero in degree? Exactly. And if there are multiple zero in degree, then we will we will choose one of them according to preference table. Exactly. Okay. Okay. Hmm. okay. Uh, just to repeat what he said. Uh, we are we have to select the nodes whichever ha doesn't has an in degree node so i will be selecting that node first but if there are multiple nodes with zero in degrees so in topological order that is what we do we find the yeah. nodes with zero in degree and if we mm -hmm. have uh, a node with zero in degree we first add it and if we are having multiple nodes with zero in degree then we can go in any order that is what was in the topological sorting algorithm. But now right. here we have a preference list which says this, which uh, which actually shows which value should come before that. So if three and two are having uh, uh, both two and three are having zero in degrees, then three should come first and then two should come. Right. Okay, instead of that random thing that we had, we can have either mm -hmm. three or two, we will have a fixed order now. Right. Because of the preference list. Okay. So hmm. uh, this is what is the problem. Is the problem statement clear now to everybody? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Mm -hmm. no, so, uh, now, uh, what we should um, output? The output is the topological output, order. Topological order. Okay. Now it's clear. Yeah, the output is the order. Okay, and in the which mm -hmm. order it should be uh, following both of these. First of all, it should be topological order. That's why it should be sorted according to in degree. And once it is sorted according to in degree, it, we have you have to check according to the preference list. All right. Okay. To resolve these uh, cases when you are having the uh, same in sorry zero in degree for multiple nodes, you have to go via the uh, uh, preference list. Right. Okay. Yes. So this is the solution. Wait, I'll just copy this to this. Madam, actually, I am writing uh, the solution uh, uh, by seeing your screen. Is there any another way to get this solution after this session? Sorry, sorry. I am actually following your solution by typing it by seeing your screen. Is there any another way to get? Uh, another way is if you keep you write the solution, which is the way that we prefer to do. But if you want the solution, we will be releasing the solution soon. In like one or two weeks, we will be releasing the solutions.
next week or something the resolutions will be released okay actually because uh, like in previous one i couldn't uh, uh, fully understand that so okay you uh, want to write the solution instead of copy pasting right. it right okay i'll do that i can do that let's write the topological sort algorithm you have seen the topological sorting algorithm right right oh uh, it was there in the uh, videos yes there is so a video I'll... and this book also yes wait let me just so i can copy paste the topological sorting algorithm right just to copy paste and wait for to uh, let me write it sorry just copy paste and don't move the screen so i can retype it i have fast fast speed so i can type easily okay 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 mm -hmm. okay let's write the code we want to write code workers right so now what we have is n we need the length number of So now I'll do the in degree. Okay, in degree equals to this. Let's compute the in degree. Okay, for my in a list dot is equal to zero. Okay, so This is fine, right? Fine. I'm just computing the in degrees, okay? Mm, right. So now what we will do is Is. This is clear, right? Right. This is clear. I'm right. just finding which 
uh, what which nodes have the in degree zero hello yes madam this is what we do in topological sorting right once we have hmm. if a uh, if a node is in in degree zero then i'm just going to append it to an available list okay i want to know hmm. what are the what is the list of uh, nodes which have an in degree zero right right okay so topolo in this topo uh, list i will store what is the topological order okay so now i am just computing what are the list of nodes in this uh, which are which are having in degree zero okay so once this is done i will short it how will i short it according to this preference list right so for according to preference i will short it right so how do i short this according to preference any idea any suggestions preference we have to list and we have to compare it eh? exactly so i will merge them first okay for i in available let's say we have T equals to. I'll make another list here. This list will now contain T dot append. What is the index of this U node in preference? Okay. Hmm. Comma i. Is this clear? Right. I'll append this as a tuple. So the T will contain. T will look something like this. Okay. T is equal to. It is a tuple. What is the first element of the tuple? What is the position in the preference list? Okay, and the second one is what is the uh, number? I think in a single tuple we were putting. Yes. 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 Sorry. Yeah. What is the number? Okay, my T will have a tuple. The first value of the tuple will be the what is the position in the preference list, and the second value of the tuple will be what is the number itself. Okay, so once this is done, I can just sort T. Is this clear? Right. So now I know which number. Is in the first position and which number is in the second position, right? Hmm. Hello. Yes. Oh, this is one way. Okay. There is another way out. Another way out is I will take a list T. Okay. I make this new list T, and for U in preference. I go to the preference list. If U is available, sorry, not available. If U in available, if my U has an in degree equal to zero, then I will append U to T. Right? Hmm. Hello. Right, madam. So now I have all the uh, list of uh, no, list of nodes in the say which have in degree zero in the order in which they occur in preference. 
is this clear hmm so i will look into every number of preference i will see if it is available or not and if it is available then i am putting it into t so with every i am going in the same order as the preference i am enumerating in the same order as it is there in the preference so preference if has 1 3 2 4 2 5 10 then yes. i will first go to 3 then i will go to 5 if 3 and 5 are available right yes and and we need to exit this loop as we soon as we get exit this loop as soon as we get no until and unless i have to look into every preference number right if it is available or not if it is available then i am appending it to t otherwise i am not appending it to t but i am doing it in the same order as it should be in the preference order yes yes so you will pick the first of the element of the t exactly we will pick the first element of t hmm. so let or here we will be picking the second element of the first tuple for this case hmm right which case do you want to go so i will keep that the other one i will delete yes second one is more easy but you can go with the first one uh okay uh any suggestions so i'll delete the first one or should i delete the second one no just comment out any one of them okay let's just comment out the second okay so now what should be my uh, element which should be added to the topological sort the first element right right so the first element is stored in my j is equal to a uh, t of 0 of 1 do you agree with this right okay so i will append this to topological sort okay this is clear right so mm. now what i will do is for every uh, for every node b in a list of j what will i do here i'll keep on reducing the n degree because i am removing sorry n degree is equal to negative equal to 1 yes n degree minus equal to 1 okay so for the other case it will be the exact same thing but here the value of j will change here what should be the value of j j will be t of 0 right hmm everything else will be same all right okay this is the solution and at the end we just return the topo Okay. So this is the solution for the third problem. Okay. Do you guys want me to write the solution for the second problem? I'll write. I can write it. No, I I wrote it. Anybody else need me to write the solution for the second problem? No, ma'am. Ma'am, this third. one is failed in test sorry this third one is failed in test 
for we in one minute this last one what you write in degrees yes in degree in degree equals to in degree minus oh sorry in degree of k this should be in degree of k in degree, so in of, degree v, of v v yes want me to run the test cases or something oh ho oh. this again fail i don't know why but at the last i can see that we have to need more practice of these concepts Without Sorry, practice. at the last. At the last, I conceive that we need to more practice of these concepts. Actually, this week's questions were a little bit hard. Yes. This week's questions are actually very hard, so don't get uh, disappointed because of uh, this week's questions. This I had removed, forgotten. In degree of j also we should re reduce by one, right? Otherwise, in the second uh, time when we are going into, uh, we will be looking for available. It will again get selected here. We need to reduce the in degree of j also here, right? Mm -hmm. That's why it was. Hello. Yes. It's again failed. But... No, I mean that was an error. I don't know why it is failing now again, but that was an error that should be there.
मैडम इन लाइन नंबर 14 यू राइट अवेलेबल टास्क इट शुड बी अवेलेबल ओनली दिस वन राइट राइट and can you check the results and uh, run test cases there is a not like results you can see what's the problem the results uh, results button is there oh yeah uh, oh there is some error here oh okay it was failing because we have used a different name for the function that name i uh, corrected already but it no instead it fell oh okay <laughs> can you see your code from start to finish i can copy sorry can, uh, can you please share the code uh, see the code just see the code start to finish i can recheck with match with myself yes and then you will get this course in one or two days and you do need to practice hello you can scroll down hmm more scroll down the other way if you had written that was uh, p equals to this for u in reference if u in then t dot then and it is equal to the other method yes okay. is this fine anybody has other doubts or something no ma'am okay oh, so no, should i go do the coding for the second problem or you want you want to try it out we can try it out okay okay basically for the second problem what you have to do is you have to write the first problem but with a small variant it's the exact same first problem the small variant is you need uh, a prevention list okay you need this prevent list if the vertex is in the prevent list you cannot add that vertex to the uh, list so you cannot add, consider that vertex for computing the bfs okay once that part is done the last part will be you keep on finding until and unless there are any uh, paths to from n1 to n2 until and unless your uh, n value the distance to n value does not become zero or infinity or it, it it doesn't become infinity or it doesn't become uh it there is a path you just keep on finding a, a, a path to that and you keep on appending those values to the prevent list the nodes in that path to the prevent list okay 
so basically you have to uh, write a while loop in the, the extra part will be a while loop which will keep on finding the path uh, finding the shortest path to the uh, end from the start okay and every stop with every shortest path you have to now uh, keep a count like once you are running the while loop how many times that while loop is running you have to keep a count and with every run of the while loop you need to extract the elements which are not the start and the end in the shortest path and add it to the prevent list am i making is this getting clear is this clear or should i explain it again hello if you want if anybody has doubt then just let me know i'll explain problem number 2 again no madam the main problem is we haven't do much practice it's insufficient of practice Sorry? i yes. think it's uh, is insufficient practice the key problem of our right Yes. Yes. Okay then. If this is clear, then should we stop the um, uh, stop the discussion? Sure. Yes, ma'am. Sure. Okay. Okay. Anybody else has any doubt? Can you can ask. Okay, can then. you, you. Uh, guide yes. us how should we practice this uh, in the more less time? Uh, no, that will the uh, amount of time required for uh, solving these problems and everything that will keep on decreasing with the more number of problems you will keep on solving. Okay, okay. it is just. get on decrease like uh, with practice it will just keep on improving okay you can just put a uh, number on something like that it will slowly will keep on reducing it will not reduce uh, at a time or something okay yes ma'am hello hello actually in this week i couldn't Uh, type the code from the lecture and like the practice uh, yeah so you have to look into the lecture you can read the you should uh, read the lectures you should uh, understand what is happening uh, what is being uh, explained to you what is actually going on in the uh, lecture what the professor is saying you need to understand that if you have any doubts then clarify the doubts and then you attend the problems and then try to uh, solving the problems okay? sure ma'am thank you usually algorithms right uh, isn't it a theoretical course why do we have so much programming in algorithms uh actually look the idea behind algorithms see what exactly is an algorithm algorithm is a solution you are having a problem and you need to find a solution okay so that is what algorithm is about uh, every yes. algorithm you see algorithm means it is a solution and data structures are just ways of uh, storing something okay so yeah. data structure basically replicates what uh, what are the different ways of uh, sol solving this problem Wha how do you store these values and variables okay that is what data structure is about algorithm is basically a solution to the problem okay so there are different types of real life problems and you need this solution now i want to suppose i want to implement a uh, i want to do some i want to design a fridge so i need i have a problem there that my fridge should work for this much time if this is working then it should work all of those programming part they are basically solutions to a problem when you are simulating something let's say nasa is designing a telescope or something or isro is designing a rocket so you need something to write there right the rockets how the rocket will work there all of that needs to be written down and all this programming is basically a way it is programs are basically a computer understandable language 
of uh, like we are saying the solution is our mathematically we are saying that a plus b is equal to 10 so Two plus no, no, no. I understand that. I understand that. I just uh, expressed my opinion on uh, uh, this one. Okay, it was a lot more programming than I had anticipated because I was expecting largely theoretical questions on this. Sorry, thing. sorry, sorry. You are not. I was no, I was expecting a lot more theoretical questions uh, um, on the concepts of algorithm. Uh, like uh, Milman or some book was the book is the right. It will have a lot of theory problems for algorithm. I was expecting along those lines when I took this course. But it is actually nice, and it's a lot of programming which actually helps in understanding the algorithms better. Exactly. So we have the solutions, but morely most of the time um, the work of algorithm is basically our computers are mostly used for implementing some. Uh, solutions to every problems in different fields of uh, real life applications, right? We have seen that, we know that in every real life application you go, you will have a computer and you need us, you are using that computer to solve some problem. And basically algorithms are more, more or less solutions to every problems, okay? And these programs are basically computer understandable languages to solve that problem. And the best way to understand uh, an algorithm is to uh, write it down, right? You, have, you want to solve different problems, then only you can get acquainted with what is happening, right? So that is why we are having more of programming instead of theory. Uh, thank you. Any other questions or doubts, or should we stop here? I think people will fall asleep. Here. I think people will fall asleep if you don't stop here now. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Good night. Only three of them. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank, thank you, man. Good night. Good night.